Good day, good day, everybody. Once again, we're back for our lesson module three. This is uh, the second phase of our training. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the first phase. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, advancing the implementation of the UNFCCC and its treaties. Uh, this is more like a, the core of the negotiation. This is all about what we do in the negotiation uh, uh, to find uh, the solution to this climate crisis, uh, the kind of support that we, we have to get and the, uh, you know, the finance, the, 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 the systems. But before I say a lot, uh, for this particular module, you can refer to the study guide, page 27 to 51, where you will get more details on what I will be uh, uh, training, uh, teaching today. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we move to the next slide. The next slide is basically on the outlines of uh, uh, the outlines of what we're going to be uh, talking about today. Uh, the, uh, we're going to be talking about the mitigation, the adaptation, uh, loss and damage. Uh, these are the three pillars that we're dealing with. All are, we, we've always been having mitigation and adaptation, but now the process has added loss and damage. The periodic review, uh, the stock take, the stock take. We're going to talk about tracking progress under the UNFCC and its treaties. These are the uh, MRV systems, national communication, transparency, and reporting. I uh, will talk about the means of implementation, which is uh, what is needed by developing countries to take climate actions, finance, technology development and transfer, capacity building. We're going to talk about the uh, action for climate empowerment. This is more or less about education, public training, and uh, public participation. Research and systematic observations, where we get information about uh, the climate uh, system. And we're also talking to, going to talk about the voluntary cooperation, market and non-market approaches. We know that this can help uh, to increase our mitigation effort. How do we comply to this uh, uh, market and, uh, market and non-market mechanism? And also we have a new sector now in the process, which is the, the sub nation and non-state actors, which are now uh, basically coming into the process to tr try and bring all the actions that are taken outside the climate process, outside the government system to make sure that everything is measured, collected and reviewed and verified. Let's move on. Now, if we move on to climate adaptation, loss and damage project review, we see that climate actions to reduce emission and increase things, that is what we call it mitigation. The actions that governments and everybody is taking to reduce emission and increase things. Uh, at the same time, these actions, they also assist us to build resilience uh, uh, through our development of low carbon development pathways. And we also associate climate change impact in developing nations that results to permanent losses and damages. Uh, we know that climate change impact in developing countries is, is also giving rise to losses which are permanent, but not only developing countries as well as in developed countries. Uh, we also look into the convention's ultimate objective what is it trying to achieve? And then we also look into the Paris Agreement, uh, which is basically trying to increase ambition, adaptation, and the support goal. Let's move on. Now we have mitigation and adaptation. These have been the two pillars of uh, 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 the climate change process. Now looking into, uh, looking into mitigation, we see that mitigation is the effort to reduce emission and increase things. And we also keep in mind that the responsibility and capabilities uh, to formulate programs and contain measures to mitigate climate action is also key for countries uh, to be able to take those actions. It also includes policies which incentivize uh, the country to in all its sectors to address uh, climate change 
uh, in order to sustain its economy. And these sectors may include energy forest, land use, waste management, agriculture, industrial processes, and transport. These are the, mainly the economic development sectors. Uh, now, uh, the convention uh, has two uh, groups. It's got the developing groups and the developed groups. Uh, we talk about this uh, uh, differentiation uh, in our last section. So for the developed groups, which are now, which are generally called Annex One, uh, they are target, they, are, they have targets, economic wide reduction emission targets. Whereas uh, the non-Annex One countries, which are mainly developing countries, they don't have targets, but they have nationally appropriate mitigation actions. For them, it's mainly actions. Now, coming to the Paris Agreement, the Paris Agreement uh, uses the national determined contributions, which are generally national efforts to reduce emissions, build resistance, and make available financial flows to help developing countries take their actions. Uh, the Paris Agreement is looking towards emission peaking, uh, most probably in the mid of this century, and uh, uh, keep within the 1.5 uh, temperature increase, and thereafter to balance between emissions by sources and removal by uh, sinks. Now, when it comes to adaptation, we, we know that uh, uh, climate change is continuing to change, and we know that the impacts are growing. So it's important that we adapt to the adverse effects of climate change, uh, such as uh, temperature, shift in season, increased frequency of extreme weather events, which results to either droughts, floods, and wildfires. And you mentioned those impacts, uh, they, 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 they just a number of them. You know, we talk of a uh, sea level rise, we talk of a uh, melting of ice cap. So basically adaptation is the actions that countries need to take to respond to the impacts of climate change, including what is already happening, as well as preparing themselves for the future impact. Adaptation solutions take many shapes and forms such that there is no one size fits all in adaptation solution. And the key component of the long-term response to climate change in order to protect people, livelihood, and ecosystem is adaptation. Within the Paris Agreement, we have defined what is called an adaptation goal. And all along, adaptation was not equated to mitigation, but with the, uh, with the Paris Agreement, adaptation and mitigation are now considered more or less equal. And the adaptation goal under the Paris Agreement is to enhance adaptive capacity and build resilience, to reduce vulnerability and continue towards sustainable development. So now we're bringing in sustainable development. So it's important to also understand the sustainable development goals where climate change, I think it's number 30 also come, climate action comes in. We need to also ensure adequate response in the content of global temperature goals. We know that in mitigation, we've set the global temperature goal to a uh, limit or set the temperature to be below two degrees pre-industrial times and uh, uh, pursue effort to uh, uh, remain within 1.5 uh, degrees. Moving on, now we have now the third pillar that I've talked about, which is the Warsaw, International Mechanism for Loss and Damage and Review Global Toxic Extremes. Slow onset, such as uh, uh, sea level rise, uh, droughts, uh, floods, you know, these events they build over time. And under the uh, Warsaw International Mechanism for Loss and Damage, parties have decided to establish executive committee and they've tasked this committee as a clearing house and repository for information on insurance and risk transfer. So far, uh, that's how parties have gone into. Negotiations are going on on the loss and damage. It will be uh, 
good to get more information, more decisions taken on loss and damage because we know very well that the climate change continues uh, to create problems. We lose life, uh, life loads are lost, and these things they are continuing as the climate change continues. Uh, now we have also the periodic review, whereby parties are reviewing the adequate temperature goal and overall progress towards achieving this goal, including support. We know very well that uh, in the uh, convention, we have an ultimate objectives uh, whereby we are, we are setting ourselves a level where uh, human activities should not interfere with the, uh, uh, the climate system. Uh, the, 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 the Paris Agreement has also uh, established the need for a global stock take. And this is a process for assessing the implementation of the Paris itself, global temperature. The Paris has already set a global temperature, like I've said before. It also has set the adaptation goal. So it will also assess the implementation of adaptation and the support goal and collective progress towards achieving its long-term goal. We move on. Uh, now we're moving on to tracking progress under the climate change treaties. Are we making progress towards addressing this climate crisis? How do we know? How do we measure? How do we report, basically? Uh, the, the convention has taken a decision at the climate conference uh, on the basis of transparency. Uh, that the process must be transparent. And being the transparent, the process will promote public trust, goodwill, and credibility of the environmental decision-making process that is ongoing. It will also ensure that monitoring climate actions are effective and efficient. We know that climate governance con connect is connected with deliberative democracy, public participation, and rule of law. And that will help us to sort of uh, be in line with everybody as we are trying to address uh, the, 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 the climate problem. Now, uh, the process have seen it necessary that the governments and non-state actors, which are non-government actors, such as uh, municipalities, business, civil society, they need to work together to deliver on a high ambition and build resilient nation and mobilize financial resources to support climate actions, not necessarily in developing countries, but also in developed countries. But since developing countries, some countries in the developing world are very much vulnerable to climate change, yet they don't have the means uh, to take climate action. Let's move on. Moving on to measurement supporting and verification, the famous MRVs, communication and transparency framework. Uh, the process, the climate conference, they are always negotiating modalities, procedures, and guidelines for the measurements and reporting and verification of climate action and support. In order to see whether we're making progress to understand our needs, we need to do measurements, we need to report, and we need to verify our report, uh, the authenticity and the accuracy of them. Uh, the reporting, according to the negotiations, uh, it's, it's defined in terms of when it should be submitted when it should be reviewed. And all the, the MRV system re provides the requirement of reporting, timeline for submission of report, internal review of information provided. But this process is not so wondrous for developing countries that it is for developing countries. Developed countries are expected to take emission reduction economic-wide targets, like I've said before. Now, the foundation of report in the climate change process is the National Greenhouse Inventory, 
and the National Communication and Reports on policies and measures taken by nations, by government to address climate change. These reports, they are basically uh, done at national level and they are uh, submitted to the uh, Climate Change Secretary. Such reports, they provide transparency and is the basis of understanding and guiding the implementation. Now, what are these national communication? National communication are simple climate change policies and measures, as well as the inventory of the greenhouse gases that the, the country is emitting and the things. So when you do the greenhouse gas inventory, you're actually looking at the sources of the GHGs and the removals of the GHGs, which is mainly the sources. Now, the, the, the content of the report and the timetable of submissions of these national communications are different between developed and developing countries. And they are always taken in accordance with the common but differentiated responsibility and respective capacity, CBDRRC. National communications uh, for all countries and parties, they are submitted every four years. But in addition, developed countries, uh inventory are always submitted every year. And the non-developing countries, I mean, uh, developing countries, uh, they are submitted three years after entering to force and thereafter every four years or depending on the funding as well because developed countries are being funded to uh, undertake their national communication. Under the Kyoto Protocol, Annex 1 countries submit supplementary information related to the implementation of the Kyoto Protocol. And under the Paris Agreement, all parties report under the transparency framework of actions and support. They do their national communication, their class inventory, and they all go under review of expert and desk reviews and in country visit. Mainly the developed countries, national communication and class case inventory uh, undergo that. Uh, now, the development of criminal case inventory and the national communications are supported by the IPCC guidelines 2006. So all parties have to uh, make efforts to use those guidelines. Now, the transparency framework and reporting under the convention and in the Paris Agreement is not really the same. Under the convention, Transparency under the convention. We've got the transparency framework for developed countries where they have their national communication, they've got their greenhouse gas inventory, when they also have their national policies and measures for mitigation and adaptation. They also have to submit their biennial reports, and this biennial reports undergo the process of international assessment and review, where a technical review of submission information is undertaken, and then a material assessment of progress is made in meeting their mitigation targets. This starts with online questions and answers, and then there's a workshop style session to give brief presentation and additional answers, additional questions and answers. But with the developing countries, they also have the national communications, they also have the greenhouse inventory, and also have policies and measures efforts uh, and adaptation of options. They are also doing the final update review every two years, and then they are on the own process, the international cons consultation and analysis. This is, uh, this process, the final update reports undergo the technical analysis by expert, by a team of experts. There's also the facilitative sharing of views, which is more or less a workshop style like where the party under review uh, give a brief presentation of his PR and then that's followed by uh, oral questions and answers. 
Now, with the Paris Agreement, the transparency under the Paris Agreement, we know that in the Paris Agreement, all parties are treated in the, more or less in the same manner. Of course, there is some uh, flexibility for those most vulnerable countries, but all countries are expected to do the same report. Uh, so it means for all countries, they must submit their NDCs, their national determined contributions, and progressively review this uh, NDC every five years. Okay, and all parties are subjected to the transparency framework of action and support, whereby they will have the binary transparency report, which will undergo technical expert review and material consideration of progress uh, by uh, the process. We also have the standing committee of finance, which is basically providing guidance when on financial mechanism and improve transparency through the MLV of support. Now, this standing committee, uh, it has also been negotiated by parties and it is being tasked to report on binary assessment and overviews of the financial flows. So these are the MRV systems that are undertaking at this process at this moment where we have the developed and developing countries under the convention and we have the transparency uh, of uh, transparency framework of actions and support under the Paris Agreement. And then we've got the, the binary assessment and a review of financial flows under the, the standing committee. Now, the, the convention is establish uh, financial mechanisms as one of the means of support and it was already negotiated uh, the operational entities, and in this case with the environmental facilities, uh, which has established a separate secretary to manage the funds. Uh, under the global environmental facilities, uh, we've got a special climate change fund, uh, which is there to assist developed countries uh, to take up actions and to take up climate actions or mitigation and adaptation. And we've got the list development country funds to, to help developing countries with their national adaptation plan program. Uh, we also have the Green Climate Fund, which has been established by, which has established a board to manage uh, the, 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 the funding. Now, the negotiations, the conferences have also negotiated for a work program on long term finance. Basically, the, the role given to the, this work program is to scale up new and additional predictable and adequate funds, including the joint mobilization of 100 billion uh, pledged by developing countries. Uh, this money was pledged uh, uh, in Cancun. We'll be hearing on this, uh, how this money was pledged in the conferences in the, in the next uh, uh, module, which is module five, five for, for, our case, for module four in our case. Now, the financial process has also established financial modules, which are trying to assist the conference in also making progress in understanding uh, how parties are supported, uh, how funds can be really be given uh, in a more speedier uh, manner. And the three modules that have been established is the national communication, where information is communicated by parties on provision of support in their national communication. And the second one is the fast start finance, where information communicated by parties, developed countries in the contents of their committee to provide the, the 100 billion uh, pledge uh, finance. And then the last one, the third one is funds managed by chair. This is a joint effort by the Secretariat and the Jeff Secretariat on financial flows of the Jeff as one of the operational entities of a financial mechanism of the convention. Let's move on. Now, uh, when you talk of the means of technology, you talk about finance. I mean, the means of finance, you talk about finance, technology development and transfer, you talk about capacity building as well. Now, in technology development and transfer, parties have uh, agreed in the conference to establish a technology development mechanism. 
Now, within the Technology Development Mechanism, there's Technology Executive Committee, the TEC, which mainly deals with uh, policies in the technology development and transfer uh, area. And they also establishment the Climate Technology Center Networks, CTN, which is mainly dealing with the implementation of the technology development transfer. Now, coming to capacity building, capacity building is needed to enhance the ability of individual organization and institution in developing countries and countries in economic in transition to identify, plan ways to mitigate and adapt to climate change. They don't have this kind of capacity building. Now, the process of negotiation led to the, conf to the conferences establishing the Paris Comment on Capacity Building, which basically uh, addresses gaps and needs in implementing capacity building in developing countries. Within the Paris Agreement, the conferences has established a capacity building initiative for transparency uh, to build institutional and technical capacity and to support developing countries enhancing their transparency framework requirement on the, under the Paris Agreement. We know that uh, developing countries have not been reporting intensively uh, under, the con under the convention, but now they are expected to report in an equal terms with developed countries. And those countries which can't do that, they are expected to progressively build up towards uh, those level, except of what those vulnerable countries that are then finally poor. Now, moving on, uh, we know that under the Article 6 of the Convention, uh, it calls upon parties to educate, empower, and engage all stakeholders and major groups on policies related to climate change. Now, this process is very important for governments and people, communities, to understand what kind of climate measures and adaptation policies they need to take. Now, parties further negotiated uh, the Doha Work Program, which allows them to establish a dialogue to provide regular forum for parties and other stakeholders to share their experiences, exchange ideas of good practices, lesson learned regarding implementation of Article 6 of the Convention, Article 10 of the Paris Agreement, I mean the Kyoto Protocol, and Article 12 on the Paris uh, Agreement. Article 6 on the on, on, on the convention, we, we've heard that it's all about education, empowering, and engagement of stakeholders. Now, parties have seen it necessary to sort of uh, create another program. And this program, they have called it ACE Actions for Climate Empowerment. To empower all members of the society now to engage in climate actions through education, training public awareness, public participation, public access to information and international cooperation. We move on. Now, as we move on, we move on to research and systematic observations. We move on to cooperative, voluntary cooperative, compliance and mechanism. Research and systematic information is very important to inform the climate change regime, national and regional policies. The science observed is key prerequisition for advancing science knowledge on climate change and advance for informed policymaker. Now, coming to voluntary cooperation, uh, voluntary cooperation uh, for both ambitions on NTMC and, and adaptations, parties have established uh, what they call it market-based approach, which is basically an intentional transfer of mitigation outcomes of their NTCs. And this will help them to, for sustainable development and should encourage broader participation in climate action from the public and the private sector. In this particular item, parties will be able to exchange for momentary purposes, the terms of 
carbon dioxide emissions that they've been able to reduce or that they can be able to reduce. And that way it will put some incentive into the process. However, they've also decided on non-market-based approaches. This is basically policy issues, which are meant to incentivize climate actions that basically creates an alternative from a high emission product. This includes such as putting taxes on energy. You're not in taxes on carbon dioxide. This doesn't actually uh, create uh, carbon emissions that will be exchanged, but it makes the government or the people to look for alternative uh, sources of energy, for instance, uh, without and uh, reduce their use of uh, uh, fossil fuels. Now, this uh, voluntary cooperative has established two mechanisms, a framework for countries to count their ITMO towards their indices. This is where there will be exchange, maybe trading, you know, emission trading, joint trading on, on, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, their mitigations or their uh, emissions. They also have established a new mechanism under the international oversight. This is more like the clean development mechanism in, in, in the Kyoto Protocol, which is trying to help uh, uh, you know, some trading between developed and developed countries, even though there is no more bifurcations of uh, countries in the Paris Agreement. But we know that there's still flexibility. We know that there are still those countries which are developing uh, as well. Now, compliance mechanism, there are two compliance branches under the KMP. There's the enforcement branch and the facilitative branch. And under the Paris Agreement, uh, it has established a committee that is expert-based and facilitative in nature and function in a manner that is transparent, non-adversary, and non promotive If we can move on. Now, we have the role of subnationals and non-state actors. The Paris Agreement has called upon parties to communicate long-term, long greenhouse gas emissions development strategy target by the middle of this century. Now, this is an effort to support the call or the push for net zero carbon dioxide in line with the latest information and to keep, make sure that uh, the countries keep within uh, the 1.5 uh, temperature decrease. Now, it is clear that deep transformations towards net zero emissions requires the mobilization of actors across all segments of society. This will include regions, cities, business, investors, alongside countries. And in COP20 in Lima, Peru launched the non-state action zone for climate action portal as an online tool to track and, and aggregate information on actions being taken around the world by subnational and non-actional state actors. Now, this is trying to bring the various actions, climate actions that are taken outside governments, uh, for instance, by municipalities, they are also making those measures, business communities, but they need to sort of bring these kind of actions into the forum so that uh, they can have one, uh, sorts of measurements, review, and reporting. And the convention has uh, established a, a dialogue, which was called the Taranoa Dialogue, uh, where non-part stakeholders, uh, uh, governments uh, came together, you know, uh, to sort of dialogue. Uh, on, 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 on how to enhance the ambition in 2020 and how to develop the long-term low carbon emissions development strategy and each government international agents to step up finance, technology, technology cooperation, private sector leaders to be the agent of change. Well, that brings me to the end of this lesson. Please take the quiz and 
make sure that uh, uh, you move on to the next uh, module on this phase. I thank you very much. All the best.